forget about the big boys. Forget about Ohio State for a second. Forget about who's favored in any given conference. Give me some dark horse college football playoff contenders. Because there's this thinking right now, well, there's thinking in any season, that something crazy always happens. I never laugh at predictions for this reason. I may think some are outlandish, but I don't ever laugh at predictions. Here's why. There's no football season you could find me in recent history where you look in December and all the outcomes that you got were pretty much spot on matches to what everyone was predicting in July. Always something crazy happens. That's just the nature of sports and competition, period. But especially when you factor in injuries, just one big injury in the sport of college football, if it's to the right or wrong person, it gets in a ripple effect and shock waves that the entire sport feels. That in week one, that could happen and completely turn upside down every prediction that you have. So I don't ever laugh at predictions, but I think it's pretty widely held that Alabama is a legit contender this year. Uh, Georgia is, Florida is, Clemson in the ACC and, and TBD elsewhere in that conference, Ohio State, Oregon in the Pac-12, like Oklahoma. These are programs, a variation of those everyone's going to have in their playoff prediction field. But we're talking dark horses here. And I want to add one more caveat before we go down a list of just some teams that I want to tell you to keep an eye on and why I'm keeping an eye on them. Outside of everything else that's crazy that happens in any given year, keep in mind, if we have a college football season this fall, however long it is, whenever it starts, however many people are in the stands for it, uh, the worry and concern about infectious disease is not going away. So here's what could happen. You could just not have a season. You could have a version of a season, or you could have a complete season. But even in the best of best cases with complete season, it's not like you're going to just turn off the concern about disease. And what I mean by that is, look past injury. What if a program, what if one of these major programs gets hit and you wake up Tuesday morning, front page, 247sports.com, fill in the blank university, 10 starters test positive. What do we do with our predictions? So keep all that in mind and, and remember that 2020 could be the most volatile season in the history, recent history of this sport, at least since 2007, for a number of reasons that didn't exist in 2007. I'm going to throw North Carolina at you. I've gone over this on the Late Kick Extra podcast. I went over it on Late Kick Live a couple of weeks, I think it was, Colin, a couple of weeks ago. And here's my thinking here. My thinking here is this is not the favorite in the ACC. This is a team that's good enough to contend, though. And because of their out-of-conference schedule, at Central Florida to open the season, that's a top-20 caliber opponent, and versus Auburn in Atlanta in Week 2. That's another top-20 caliber opponent. If North Carolina happens to get one or two of their conference opponents to rise just a little bit above expectation to where they're playing at a top-20 level, and you get three or four top 20 caliber wins on your resume, there's a chance that they could even go to the ACC title game and lose close. They lose close to Clemson and the Tigers are like a one seed or a two seed. If all else is topsy-turvy and it's not just a shoe in one, two, three, four, this could be one of those programs. Crazy though it may sound because they're from what is perceived to be the weakest conference in America in Power 5 right now. It's crazy though it may sound because of how they've beefed up their out-of-conference schedule. If some craziness happens elsewhere and they don't lose a regular season game and their only loss is to a bona fide national championship contending playoff team and they've got one loss there, who knows? Who knows how good their resume may look at the end of the year? Another one that I've thrown at you that I think is the most likely non-conference champion to make the playoff, I've told you this before, is Penn State. Penn State's in a very similar situation. Some people view it as a disadvantage that they have to play in the same division as Ohio State. I don't view it as that. A twofold here. Number one, they've been competitive with Ohio State. Number two, they get them at home this year. Number three... They don't play them in the second to last week or last week of the season. They get them, I think, in week eight. So what I'm saying there is even if they lose to them, it's probably not a blowout. It's competitive. It's at home. And you've got time after that loss to make up ground again. And they've got a good enough strength of schedule. They play teams like Michigan. They, they go, I think, to Michigan. They go, I think, to Nebraska. So they go to Virginia Tech in the out-of-conference. They've got enough juice on their schedule to where they can afford a loss and be sitting there. Now, of course, this team could win the Big Ten. 
that's not out of the realm of possibility. It's not like they'd be a four-touchdown underdog to Ohio State or anything. They will be a home underdog, but it'll be a competitive game if they are sitting there with one loss. And let's say their one loss happens to be to a playoff team in Ohio State. Again, if you have some craziness that happens elsewhere, that's a dark horse team. Notre Dame is a dark horse team. Now, I had their schedule because I hadn't memorized it off the top of my head. When I came in the studio today, Colin said, is that old man? Is that Ian Book? Is he still the quarterback there? Yeah, he's still quarterback there. Um, I'm looking at their schedule, though, and they got Navy. They had to move that one stateside, but they got Navy in Arkansas, Western Michigan. I mean, there is no conference schedule, obviously, here, but the first time they play a team that will be ranked is Wisconsin, in all likelihood, is Wisconsin, and that is October 3rd. After that, I mean, they got Stanford at home, they go to Pitt, they got Duke, and then they've got the big game against Clemson. After that, their most competitive game is at USC to end the season. They don't have a conference championship game. So again, kind of the same situation that we may see with a team like North Carolina. Let's say Notre Dame's only loss is close to Clemson. Just like Penn State, only loss is close to Ohio State. And this time it's because they don't play in a conference. This team doesn't play for a conference championship or win one, but yet they're sitting there. And if some craziness has happened elsewhere, this is a team. You got that logo there. You got the cachet. Haven't been there in a while. Could be in that bubble range and crazier things have happened. And the last one, this is probably one that is not quite the caliber of team that, you know, you would classify as, oh, that's a playoff contender. That's a playoff caliber roster. Now they're getting closer. Texas A&M is another team I want to throw at you. Texas A&M is not a team that I'm going to, in all likelihood, predict to go to the college football playoff. But I want you to remember something. You wrote this team off last year before the season started because they had an impossible schedule, which was fair. They did have an impossible schedule. They don't have that this year. They don't play Georgia in the crossover. They don't go to Clemson this year. And so they got a very manageable out-of-conference the first time that they will probably be an underdog is midway through the season. They go to Auburn. They haven't beaten Auburn under Jimbo Fisher yet, but if they were to win that game, there is a distinct possibility. This is, I know this is an old talking point already for our Aggie fans, but outside of Texas A&M, if you haven't memorized the schedule already, if they get past that Auburn game, the general consensus is they'll be favored all the way to at Alabama, second to last week of the year. So let me give you the same scenario that I just kicked you with, North Carolina or maybe Penn State. If they go to Alabama and they lose competitive, a competitive game, and then in their season finale they beat LSU at home, but Bama's in Atlanta so they can't win the conference championship, that could be a team. Think about this. This is not a really so much of an if to me. If Texas A&M were to have a close loss to a playoff conference champion Alabama and they've beaten Auburn on the road, and they've beaten LSU at home, yeah, um, I think that the chances may be even more likely than not, even considering what could happen elsewhere, that they'd be in the playoff. Those are just some teams to think about, Jake. That's who answered the question, by the way, Jake, in the uh, email inbox. Just some dark horse playoff contenders to think about there. No predictions tonight. No predictions yet. That's what uh, God made July and August for, but just something to think about.